the gangs all together. So just wanted to give a shout out to one of our favorites. Happy Friday, everybody. Yay. Thanks, Jen. Yeah. So um, any questions, any um, comments, you can give us, um, you can type it on the, on the chat or um, you can also text Jen or email Jen in case you need some assistance. And uh, really briefly, uh, we're just going to do the two hour instruction. We're going to take a 10 minute break after the two hours um where we can sort of like rehydrate and take uh, any kind of breaks that we need to and then after that we'll just uh, do a q a uh exchange share um and uh, give feedback if you want to and all that stuff so um yeah dennis hopper um william egglestone i love this image and i talked about it on the uh mini video 30 minute video about the introduction i love this uh image as well it's just so incredibly um powerful uh, there's something about uh portraying a face in silence um that i love and also uh, the landscape uh, uh through the window this was uh stephen shore and this is the artist um someone bush i forgot the name <laughs> see but i'll remember my brain is not 100 percent uh, some of you uh, guys remember this assignment way back when uh, when we did it in acrylic and these are the images of people the driving side by side of um, his car and he taking a photo of them without uh, without them noticing and notice that uh, there's a flash so um, yeah i just love these images i think it's really good and i just chose this one because he's wearing a bandana already so this feels very 2020 <laughs> if you ask me these images were taken in the 80s uh so um they're really cool all in la um by the way i, uh, I love the diversity it's a really great collection um, andrew andrew bush andrew bush that's the artist a photographer and i think he's still alive but maybe jen you can tell us if he's still alive and what kind of uh, images he's taking i can tell you this you guys stephen shore is still alive and he his images he's taking now digital uh, images and they suck <laughs> they're boring and completely you know tasteless um so uh, it's amazing and um how images from the 70s and 80s taken with a film camera are still so powerful and yeah our friend i forgot his name um a russian um sounded like a russian um name uh, last name but yeah that's uh he worked as a teacher i didn't say this and then he retired and then he started doing acrylic this is acrylic uh landscapes uh, in his car and he sells them on etsy and jen if you can um if you find uh the etsy store of this guy i forgot the last name but if not i'll tell okay. you okay <laughs> yeah no problem <laughs> wait okay what's his first name at least? oh yeah i know i know i have the notes here <laughs> harry stushinov uh <laughs> s-t-o-o shinov <laughs> okay great um while i have you i found andrew bush he's still he's still alive and he lives here in los angeles oh um he was born in 1956 so quick math what is that almost like in his 60s i guess oh cool is that right <laughs> um, if you find if you're still taking pictures of things and you find anything it would be great okay yeah he definitely has some exhibition uh, oh wow Last exhibition um, was in a group exhibition in New York in 2004. It looks like. Wow. Um, so yeah, I'll see. I'll I'll put some stuff up. It'll be fine. Um, I I'm, you know, Stephen Shore and William Egglestone are the stars of the show, and they're both yeah. from the East Coast. So I think Andrew Bush are, is our uh guy uh, photographer from the 70s and 80s <laughs> okay awesome um, so yeah let's just find out what he does because i'd love to yeah kind of like promote him because <laughs> it's all about eggleston okay. i mean yeah you can compare i mean he eggleston especially his work is incredible but um 
Yeah, so these paintings, you guys, are for sale for $120, uh, actually. So um, if you find the store, the Etsy store, we can go over it later because it's a good idea to see what a contemporary artist does now and how much he sells things for. Small, um, small painting, smaller than this one, smaller than this one. Um, anyhow, I'm just gonna uh, stop the. That's all I. That's all I got. Uh, except that I have my image right here, and uh, oh, this is Julie. That's amazing. What a cool photo. Uh, this is the one that I took, and I was parked across uh, Air One. Um, and I just tested it, and um, I'm gonna choose this one. It's not fabulous but uh, I, I uh, yeah this is what I'm going to choose and um, as I said in the video it's hard to actually take a picture without showing the on the mirror without showing the phone so it's all it's all I got so I, uh, and then I am lucky to be able to have access to a printer so I took two uh, I, I printed two copies one with a uh, lighter um, image in the mirror I'm going to use later and the other one with a darker image on the background that I'm going to use now because otherwise the contrast between them was too crazy so um all right so I think we're ready and I think I'm okay we're going to start sketching and I have my 12 by 16 whatever you want to use um is fine uh the larger uh, the format the more time is going to need to get developed and um I use this just because you guys can see a little bit better on the screen. And by the way, what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna switch. So I'm gonna switch to uh, the screen that's facing uh, the board. So I think that's okay. You can see a little bit of the uh, paper right there, but uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna basically use the borders of the paper and uh, do my uh, stick figures and potato shapes. And uh, yeah, so um, super excited that you guys are here. Um, this is awesome. <laughs> Thanks for being super amazing and so kind and enthusiastic. We live for this. This is keeping us sane. So um, yeah. Anyhow, so I'm doing bigger shapes. I'm taking my time. I'm just gonna make sure that the arrangement is okay. Um, and I, this is pretty much it. I, I just have an image so, and it's cropped. So I know where things are gonna fall. It's different. Uh, there's a different level of complexity when we paint from live and then we have to uh, be more considerate with composition. But with this, I can just go over and then I can go over and make adjustments. Um, what I thought, and I'm glad you guys have chosen things that um, show a little bit of the car, because what I thought, this could have been just a view from the car, and it could have been a perfect cityscape or landscape. Um, but I thought incorporating some uh, elements from the car uh, gives it a, a new um, sort of like a... Um, uh, yeah, uh, gives it a new conceptual meaning. Just because this is this is our bubble. I talked about um, why this is our bubble, and that's the password of the meeting: bubble. <laughs> because because uh, we're owning it. We're proud of it. We're, we're always um, every time the New York Times writes about the West Coast and LA, they are so miserable and bitter and jealous they always say um uh things like they're shocked that we have public transportation and that we uh, i don't know there's so many stereotypes and it happens all the time it's annoying um so at the beginning we thought you know what we're gonna go through this better than new york because um this is our lifestyle. Our city is super wide. We have a lot of space because the space is also a word that they use a lot. You know, we have a lot of space and we live in cars. So New York was getting hammered with uh, the virus. It's just really tragic. And 
for a moment we just thought that you know we can we can handle this and then now we are on a free fall so um this is really it's really interesting because um, what happened well, well we know what happened we have <laughs> a lot of stupid people in Huntington Beach sorry a lot of stupid people in Huntington Beach sorry if you have family and friends living there this this does not apply to you but uh, they were the first ones who started this whole anti-mask situation um, Kion's family lives in Orange County and uh, they were just so upset that um, people showed up in that infamous um, city council meeting and started spewing some nonsense. So was it that? I don't know. Was it the marches? Um, I don't know. Um, I don't know. But the, the point is that what we thought was going to save us um, is now not working as well. So. Anyhow, I'm, I'm starting to shade a little bit um, just because I have a lot of black. So, and I try to keep my um, shapes um, simplified. So simplification and repetition. This is something that you guys have heard me say a million times, but I, it, it doesn't hurt to repeat myself. Uh, you know, I like to say it mostly for myself. So I know where I stand. Simplification, repetition. Simplification means that I don't have to be, um, um, I don't have to uh, uh, allow myself to move forward unless things are literal. Simplifying things means to get to the core of them. Um, so proportions are not that important right now. Arrangement is. What's the difference between proportions and arrangement? So proportions uh, are more. Um, uh, there's more of a relationship implication. You know, we have to find out the width and the height and the alignment of things. Arrangement is more focused on the size of our format. Um, so yes, it's different um, proportions and arrangement. Proportions, it's something that I feel like people um, think they must learn. Um, and to me, proportions is all about observation. It's a slow process. So uh, the more you practice observation, the more you're gonna find better relationships between things. And that will take us to um, having more of a handle on proportions. You don't learn proportions without um, having a sense of uh, being able to observe and analyze and find relationships. Uh, it, it doesn't happen first. What happens first is observation and relationship, um, finding relationships. And then that amounts to proportions. So it's not so much of a skill in, uh, independent uh, from anything else. Um, and I just, you know, in a, it, it irritates me that people have such um, that are hang on that concept of proportions are wrong, proportions are wrong. Um, it, it could be dangerous, uh, dangerous in, in the sense of like uh, making a stall in the process. Forget about proportions, for, forget about the word, forget about what it means. Just concentrate on what you see and try to find uh, relationships between things that you represent. That's all we can do that's all we can do and then over time uh, we will uh, find out that we are becoming a little bit more fluent in finding relationships and seeing and that's what proportions um, are all right so i think yeah i have a lot of black so It's nice to unplug our brains. It's nice to uh, do this together, even though we are um, not in the same space or in the same room or um, 
but it's nice to know that um, you guys are on the other side um, doing this. So right at this point, after so many months, um, we can say that we find um, uh, other levels of appreciation. Because first it was like, ah, it's not the same. We're not, uh, we're not together. And, but now um, I feel like um, emotionally I recalibrated my appreciation. So uh, it is what it is. This is where we stand. And, um, but it's nice that you, you know that uh, someone's on the other side. It's a very religious experience. <laughs> That involves trust, um, you know, that someone's on the other side. Oh, the things we go through. <laughs> All right, so I love that I have uh, elements, random elements cropped here and there. I have like a palm tree and I have buildings. Um, there's a lot going on. And um, in my composition, it's not very clear. It's not very clear because I have a figure and the figure is chopped. I only see the legs and then I see the curve. Um, it's a little bit, uh, oh yeah, I know where I was. I wasn't, I wasn't in front of like Air One. I was, um, I picked up laundry. <laughs> and I was just basically facing uh, Fairfax and getting, uh, getting ready to leave uh, after I picked up the laundry. Uh, our washer um, broke. <laughs> How is that for a painting webinar, you guys? <laughs> uh, let's get back to the technique. Okay. So, um, yeah. All right. So I think, I think I'm okay. Um, I'm not displeased. And here are the things. I'm going a little bit faster because usually I take more time. But you guys are pros. So um, I'm... Uh, I'm just kind of like moving forward. And what's important at this stage, uh, always important, always important, make sure you dedicate some time uh, to pause, to pause and kind of like arrest your train of thoughts because otherwise we keep sort of like tumbling down or sliding down. Stop and uh, ask yourself what you've done where you are, and then what uh, are you planning to do moving forward? And it, it could take like 15 seconds. Uh, so it's important to me that I understand that um, where I'm at right now is I finished the sketching process um, and what I achieved was the potato shape and um, uh, stage uh, and a little bit of shading and uh, I was cons considering arrangement. So. I'm ready for uh, the next step, which will be um, staining or washing. And, but it's important to sort of like stop and literally articulate where you are, how far you've gone, or, uh, and also check out the time and um, try to find out what you're going to do with the time that you're left. These are things that you could do when you're painting on your own, if you are painting on your own and you have a limited amount of time. Because otherwise, it's... it's it's kind of hard to set yourself up and then not think of those things unless you have um, uh, an interrupted time forever uh, during the entire day. But we still have to manage uh, those things. So I think so. You can step back. Um, if you have the chance, because it's something that we always do at the end, but take a picture of your work and look at your work uh, on the screen, because it's gonna inform you of things that maybe you're not able to see right now. So sometimes getting feedback from taking a photo uh, is helpful. So um, what I also love about this assignment that it's uh, a little bit more forgiving than what we did last week, which was the uh, self-portraits with the masks. So it's a cityscape or a landscape. So what, an what anchors the, uh, the open space is the frame of the car. So that gives me a sense of comfort and security that I can just do that and then uh, set that as the, as the anchor of everything else. So in that sense, 
I think that's okay. I think that's okay. All right, so I'm just gonna move to the next uh, stage and that um, is gonna be the washing and I'm using two liquids. I'm using two liquids. I should have uh, up uploaded uh, my palette, but it's basically the neutrals, all the neutrals plus the pink and the light blue. Um, but yeah, I use two liquids. One is the uh, mineral spirits and the other one is the medium. Um, so um, for those of you that haven't painted in a while with us, uh, we've been kind of like changing things up a little bit. Some of you are using gall kit, the fast drying gall kit, and that's fantastic. So um, as long as you have a thicker medium, it works. So um, what I've noticed is that um, with gall kit, it dried so fast that uh, I just had to work on the painting right away. Otherwise, it would be completely dry. So I switched, we switched actually, uh, even before the confinement, we switched to this uh, solvent-free um, fluid. Whoops, I should just do it like this. A solvent-free uh, fluid, um, which is um, non-toxic, by the way, and it doesn't have any fumes. And it's, it's very, um, it has a nice consistency. And um, it doesn't speed up drying. It's just, and it doesn't slow it down. So I guess it's like medium speed of drying. So, but I felt like this wasn't enough. I needed to, um, I needed the paint to stay wet a little longer because the thing is that we do, we do this on Friday and then we meet again on Tuesday and we have four days, right? And it just feels like it's a long time, but then Friday is gone after the webinar. Let's basically, but let's kind of like put it like this. And then I blink my eyes and it's Tuesday morning. <laughs> so um, I need the paint to be a little bit wet. So what I do is uh, we got this uh, awesome poppy seed oil and I put a little bit of the medium and a little bit of the oil. You can mix uh, mediums and oils and I recommend it. In fact, I think it's a better idea to actually use, if you, if you do this, um, from scratch, if you use an oil, always put a little bit of a synthetic medium because the oil um, takes a long time to dry. And um, I just feel like the medium sort of like helps um, speed up the drying a little bit. Uh, so it's my new, uh, it's my new recipe, <laughs> medium and uh, oil. So I'm gonna use a big brush and then I'm gonna start with from darks to uh, darks to light dark to light. So paint's gray, I have a lot of black, so I'm just gonna um, turpentine, and here we go. And time-wise, it's perfect, it's not even 11.30, so I'm really happy about that because then we can have more time to advance the painting in its crucial time, which is usually the last 15 minutes or half an hour. Um, Again, uh, it depends on the format that you're using. If you're using a super big format, um, consider that you're probably only going to have time to do a, a wash and, and, and the beginning of first notes. Um, so I actually, I think I have the website of the, yeah, the Etsy guy, Harry Stushinov, but um, he had a very nice uh, interview uh, in case Jen, if you want to give it a try, with um, Jackson Paints. I think Jackson Paints. Jackson Paints is a company based in the UK. And yeah, uh, yeah? you found it? I think I already found it. Yep. Okay. Yep, jacksonart.com. Um, yeah. Oh, I found American Suburb X. Is that the interview? I don't let me, let me know. click on it from 2015. Okay, uh, so I found something a little different, but I, I'll look up that one. Oh, well, in, in oh, the wait, I'm sorry. Are, are we talking? To, I'm sorry. I actually was talking about Andrew Bush. Um, hold on. Let me go back. Um, we're talking about Harry, right? Yes. yes. Harry Stushinov interviewed yes. by Jackson. Yes, I do have that interview. And then I found his Etsy shop. <laughs> 
posted some things on the. Um, oh, good. Yeah, I love the paintings. Yeah, they're they're so yummy and um, yeah, really cute. Anyhow, the interview is really good. Um, I have to say that this website, uh, Jackson uh, Paint or whatever, it, the, their blog is amazing. They they do a good job with bringing really great content. And I found already a couple of things uh, from them. So in the interview, he talks about why he loves small size paintings. And his answer um, basically is everything that I wanted to say, you know, storage, um, time, all the things that make sense for an artist um, who doesn't have a studio or a major career um, to uh, make, uh, consider small paintings, um, not just uh, uh, everything small, but yeah, uh, anyhow. So I'm finding myself that I need now some blue and I think, I think I'm just gonna go for, I think we have uh, some cobalt. I'm gonna just move and find out if I can find the cobalt too. Um, I can't find it, but I have, I don't think. I have cerulean, I have cerulean blue. So I'm just gonna use cerulean mixed with uh, uh, paint spray. And I'm just gonna do the glass basically. So I'm doing, uh, what are we doing? Um, what am I doing? I'm doing a wash and I'm going darker to lighter. So I'm not worried about uh, losing definition. This is something that it's important as well because with charcoal, um, it's such a wonderful material that um, inadvertently we start moving forward with the development of the sketch because we are starting to feel confident and things are taking uh, shape and we feel um, okay I can go a little further with this sketch oh well you know what this is looking so good that I can just develop it a little further further so the issue with that is that if we take it too far uh, the definition I'm talking about the definition during the uh, the sketching. Then when we start painting, uh, we feel really frustrated because uh, when we paint, we, we lose, we think we're losing all the work that we've done and it feels very uh, frustrating. So my advice is um, to have that in mind, consider that, happen, that, that it happens and don't take the sketch too far because um, there's no reason for it. The sketch is a tool that allows us to plan and map out um, the areas that are going to contain value, basically. So the goal of the sketch is not to create uh, likeness uh, necessarily. Um, it's likeness is a consequence of the sketching stage, but it's not the goal of it. Um, so that's why it's important to learn how to stop um, and and avoid. Um, moving forward with the sketch. And I'm glad Laura is not here because she's probably, she would probably feel attacked uh, because uh, she, you guys know that she likes to sketch a lot. Um, and then uh, sketching a lot um, uh, feels almost like being caged, figuratively speaking, obviously. Um, so um, just because uh, I'm using that analogy because then you have so many lines and you have so much detail that you feel like when you start painting, you have to go um, uh, around things and, and fill up uh, small nooks in your sketch. And, and then all of a sudden more time is needed and it's, it could be really frustrating. So um, yes, it's wonderful that charcoal gives us uh, this comfortable um, um, option to move forward. But be careful, uh, just uh, you need only a few lines and what's important is the arrangement, not the likeness. It's an like everything, it's an illusion. We are, we are, um, we are supposed to uh, know what the function of our, our stage or the goal is and not get um, confused or distracted 
by something else. So yeah, so that's what I'm doing. But you guys are pros, so you know that uh, nothing really matters uh, right now. Um, nothing needs to be recognizable. Uh, you can use a single um, a single color uh, for the entire um, sketch. I mean, wash. I'm sorry. And I'm going to use a tad of the burnt sienna. Oh, for a second, I thought uh, I wasn't recording. Did you uh, push the recording, Jen? No, I did. What am I talking you about? You did. Yeah, did. you did. Because <laughs> um, I was in, I was like, oh, good. One thing yeah. we can check off our list. <laughs> can you see that it's recording? Yes, I can Okay. Tell. All right, good. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I mean, thanks. Because our, my mind, I was going to say our minds, but no, my mind completely forgets. Definitely our mind, for sure. <laughs> thanks, friend. <laughs> Always here for you, buddy. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I'm using the turpentine. Oh, I keep calling turpentine. Um, so it's mineral spirits, basically. And I know um, some of you know this, but uh, Ruthie, maybe you'll love this because you'll probably have this material, but uh, if you don't, it's awesome. So uh, turpentine, uh, the original turpentine, it's actually a non-toxic, um, liquid uh, that consists of the extraction uh, from a tree. I forgot the tree. Uh, I should know the tree, but I forgot it. Um, anyhow, anyhow, so um, it's distilled from a tree. So um, a comparable oil uh, to the original turpentine is um, tea tree oil. The way they extract the tea tree oil and then they create that clear um, very liquid um, thing. So um, terp the original turpentine, it's the same thing, but extracted from a different tree. So I found a company uh, that um, makes the original turpentine and uh, I, I bought a bottle. It's not super expensive. I think it was like $8. I'm not gonna use it. I'm not using it for this because it's, I use it for other things. Um, but it's non-toxic because it's not petroleum based. The original turpentine, the turpentine that the uh, old masters used was that extract from the tree. Uh, Janet, you can remind me of the tree. I got it. It's pine. The pine. pine. Yes. Uh, and yeah, this company is based in Georgia and, uh, they just do this handmade, um, yeah, extraction of the liquid. Um, anyhow, I brought it up just because uh, what I'm using is not turpentine because the problem with the word turpentine is that now we use it to refer to the petroleum-based liquid. And um, it's not the original turpentine liquid, which was, uh, oops, sorry about this, which was uh, actually a natural, it is a natural substance. You can use it for, you can use it for this. Uh, if it was cheaper, we would definitely use it, but it's non-toxic. Um, it may be uh, irritating uh, if you kind of like inhale it uh, like crazy, um, but it's not, um, it's not toxic or, or toxic or um, cancer causing, whatever that word is. All right, so I think I'm okay. It's uh, only 11.40, so it's not too bad. Uh, maybe I'll just do, um, yeah, so what we're using is mineral spirits, um, and the mineral spirits are um, petroleum-based. But they, uh, the formula that Gamblin does, um, they do a good job at uh, not making it super uh, with a lot of fumes. Their website uh, explains it better, but 
It's not as toxic as uh, pain thinner. Um, all right, so I think I'm okay. I kind of like covered um, pretty much all the areas. I have some construction here that has a lot of a lot going on. I didn't use white. Um, I let the white of the paper do its work. But um, this is my wash, and I think I'm fine with it. I'm not going to go into detail. And it's important to know um, when to stop. Um, one of my favorite uh, recent quotes by David Hockney, it takes years to um, uh, get it simple. Or, uh, yeah, it takes years to uh, get it simple. I, can't, I think that's a quote. <laughs> Um, to make it simple, to um, be familiar with simplicity. It's, it's, it takes years. I love that because it's true. Uh, we have a tendency of overworking things. So it's important to know whether you're sketching or you're doing a wash, um, to know exactly what the goal is, what the uh, function of the stage is, how far you're going to go with it, and not get distracted by likeness or proportions. These are not things that are on top of my list because I know they are consequences. They're not goals. So um, I know that to achieve proportions and likeness, there are a lot of things that happened before. So it's, it's about shifting or really turning your uh, list of criteria upside down and putting likeness and proportion all the way to the bottom Get them out of the way so they don't become um, obstacles and focus on ob observation. Observation and then function of what we're doing. And for me, breaking it down into different stages helps me understand where I'm at and, um, and uh, how far I have to go or rather, rather than how far I have to go, how far I've gone and how much time do I have so I can uh, start strategizing. I think I'm ready to do uh, my, or to start my first notes, and I'm gonna use this uh, nasty <laughs> brush. <laughs> um, it's not nasty, but old brushes are wonderful. And um, yeah, so what makes a painting a good brush or the painter's uh, hand? you know the answer to that. It's the painter's hand that makes a good painting. A brush will not um, by itself make it uh, or elevate your work. So uh, by the way, brush is only a tool. Some people use the palette, some people use their fingers. And so you, it's only a way to apply paint. And there are many kinds. Uh, we went over all the kinds of brushes that people use and um, yeah, so I'm gonna switch right now. As you know, uh, when I finish my wash, I switch from the mineral spirits to the medium. Whatever medium combination you have, whether it's only oil, whether it's gall kit or a combination of a medium and an oil, it doesn't matter. The function of the oil is to just uh, bring fluidity and um, yeah, dilute the pasty oil so we can start applying a thinner, uh, a layer that's thinner, but uh, that has coverage. Um, in that sense, I know that um, Sarah Brochure, who's not here, had issues with a painting that took weeks um, to dry. And it's because um, she used, I think she used linseed oil or a different kind of oil. And then the titanium white is linseed oil based. And sometimes it takes a long time to dry. So, um, I mean, it doesn't really matter. We, I mean, it's not gonna take months to dry. Um, and we, unless you are giving this to someone or you sell the painting, you don't have to worry about it. Um, but yeah, the oil situation, the, the other liquid situation, um, you, you can try different things. We always kind of like switch back and forth. We, before the gall kit, we had a different medium. I think we used like a, even stand oil at once, uh, at one time. And then we moved to gall kit because for plein air, we thought it was better. And then we moved to this, uh, the solvent free because it's non-toxic. And then um, because we are home, we wanted to have a little bit more time uh, to paint. So we used the poppy seed oil. So, 
it's a matter of like slowly um, expanding our library of materials, of our materials. Um, and then someone tells you something that you should do and then, or a material that they tried and then you want to incorporate it or we read something um, and we want to try it. So what I'm doing right now is basically with a medium brush and I'm using paints gray, I'm going over the darker areas. So still foundational. This is an opportunity to start um, changing things. So one of the things that's important to consider is that um, uh, drawing is painting. Uh, in fact, everything is drawing. Everything is drawing um, from start to finish. Uh, the only thing we're doing is um, using a different medium, a wet medium. But you could you could argue that uh, drawing is the basis of everything. Uh, we make a distinction because we use dry medium and then we use uh, brushes, but um, it's all it's all the same. So my point is that at this stage, um, don't just uh, focus on your painting and and not look at the subject because it's as important to continue looking at the subject uh, as it is to move the painting forward. So look at the subject, use the wash as a guideline, and then uh, see if there's anything that you appreciate that needs an adjustment, uh, needs to be switched or moved. Uh, don't worry about um, um, matching color or creating details or blending. Uh, first notes is about uh, laying a coat of paint on top of the wash that creates opacity. Um, and that's it. Uh, everything should be very color blocked. It's almost like a color field. So right now, uh, it's not the time to uh, find out if um, there is a glow or there is a, 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 a an edge that does something specific. What I'm doing right now is I'm just building uh, the, the, um, the wash. I'm building uh, on the wash. So my paper is very wet, so I don't need to put a lot of uh, medium and oil. Yeah, don't worry about what this looks like. And uh, again, this is something that it's a consequence. And I think that's the, th there is a lot of, um, how should I say this? A lot of, um, I wouldn't say um, mental, mentality, I guess, uh, approaches to painting. Because I feel like if you focus too much on technique, you're missing the point. Uh, of the whole process. And you're actually um, departing from what this is about, which is a form of expression. And I see it, I, I, I see in painters that um, they're so focused on technique that um, the subject, the narrative, the intention, the meaning um, drifts away. And slowly but surely, then it just becomes a game of um, hunting for likeness. And I think this word applies to this because it's the be all and end all of the creative process. I think that painting is goes beyond that hunting for likeness. Um, so I feel like it's important. Yes, uh, materials, uh, techniques are important. We are responsible for at least understanding how things um, um, developed or play out um, but it's not everything and um, in that sense um, it's I read this uh, uh, yesterday or it's it's about a struggle between the wants and the needs how about that <laughs> it's a struggle between the wants and the needs how would I articulate that, apply to uh, my mini dissertation. Um, so um, yeah, uh, I don't know.
but I think it explains it. Explains it. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I have to think about this, but maybe you guys can help me later. But uh, yeah, I think that's basically uh, a good way to putting um, uh, technique versus expression. And um, so sometimes um, we have to be uh, careful about just being all technique. You know, maybe um, maybe those are the needs. You know, we think that we need we need to we need to know we need to learn we need to um yeah we need and then the wants um it's maybe i don't know what we uh, i think i'm just gonna get back to the work because i'm just trying i'm i'm tangling um myself but uh yeah, the bottom line is that I'm trying to give you room to breathe and not um, present this as a trap because it's something that um, I feel like uh, most of us end up uh, feeling like, you know, we feel trapped. Um, and we feel trapped by our own uh, making. Um, that's my point. All right, so darks, I'm just doing the darks. Um, it's important to just focus one, one step at a time. And time, always managing time. Yeah, we're still not in the first hour, so that's great. Um, so time-wise, I feel more comfortable observations the at a minimum at a minimum you should have spent the same amount of time observing as you spent um, uh, executing something uh, so this should be a good kind of like criteria forget about likeness um, how much time do you spend looking at your painting and looking at um, at the subject so you can really uh, change your painting by shifting the ratio between uh, one thing and the other. Uh, that alone will make you a much more sophisticated painting painter than um, learning a formula by heart and then trying to replicate it on the next painting. So the bottom line is that uh, instinctually, we tend to spend more time as we move forward, we tend to spend more time looking at our painting. So we feel like you know we need to do this and we need to fix that and we need to correct this and and we end up spending a little bit more time and what happens is that when we spend more time we are not feeding our brain with visual data we're not allowing our brain to um, continue to establish relationships between things that we have painted why because the source the source of our internal dialogue is the subject the source of um, the decisions that we're making uh, is the subject and we're using observation as a tool to kind of like digest it. If we are only looking at our painting, then uh, it just becomes uh, non-sustainable. It's like looking at our navel, basically. You know, then what? Um, it's not like that, obviously, but I'm being a little bit dramatic with my analogies. Um, yeah, so always spent, I mean, uh, we tried it yesterday. Um, I mean, yesterday, <laughs> I lost sense of time. We tried it before. Um, try to spend more time, force yourself uh, to spend more time looking at the subject uh, to a point that it feels almost uncomfortable not to kind of like flip, flip back. You'll find so much more You'll see so much more if you actually spend a little bit of, I'm not saying a whole second, but a little bit more. You'll realize there are shapes that um, you could adjust. You'll find out um, positions that could be um, reassessed. There's so much that you, you will see by just looking. Um, it's such a silly um, piece of the puzzle, but so important. Just look, how, how simple is that, you know? 
You want to be a better painter. Just observe. Yeah, darker to lighter. Um, using the medium, I'm using only the uh, mineral spirits to clean the brush. Um, and I'm making adjustments. This is not, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking um, already um, that this is not a painting by numbers um, uh, piece. So I know that whatever edge I have, um, most likely it will need to be moved. So it's better to assume that, make that assumption, uh, than to um, hope for an expectation. So assume your position. Assume that every single edge that you have will need some sort of like TLC, will need some sort of like uh, moving or shifting. It's so liberating when I think that I have something there, but uh, it needs to be shifted. So otherwise, um, I'm putting pressure on myself. Is this on the right spot? Have I done the right line? Sorry, I'm just keeping, I keep hitting the, um, and then I start, I start getting nervous because then I, I, I start seeing things like, okay, maybe this one, I nailed this one, but this one, I haven't nailed it. And then all of a sudden, I'm, I'm starting uh, to have conflicting thoughts um, and that's not helpful. And not only it's not helpful, but it's, it slows me down and it drives me, nuts so yeah no um everything needs to be molded we are um i'll tell you what maybe the whole uh, basis of painting is drawing if there's something that goes after drawing is sculpting even though we're, we don't have something in front of us that it's 3d but uh i would say after drawing uh, um, painting uh, is sculpting. Uh, that would be uh, another phrase. <laughs> painting is sculpting. Sculpting, sorry. All right, so I think I'm just, uh, I'm focusing on values. I'm not, uh, I'm not focusing on um, details and blocking things out. Uh, I, I have a peace of mind knowing that um, this is a slow process, um, doing one baby step at a time. We get, we get overwhelmed. We want um, instant gratification. Things need to look, that, those are the wants. We want, we want this to look good. We want this to, um, you know, make sure that it's proportionate or make sure that uh, it reads well. And if we don't have the ones, we go into a tantrum. Um, so, yeah. I don't know. I'll have to elaborate uh, on that premise, but it's not a bad one. I don't think it's a bad one um, uh, to the struggle between the needs and the wants. Uh, I'll be able to come up with some sort of uh, practical concept that we can use. So yeah, I'm just trying to build, uh, again, I'm trying to build on what I have. This is what's important because um, it's a matter of perspective. It's a matter of pers perspective in the sense of if I have the perspective of looking at this compared to the photograph, I will feel like uh, like a complete failure failure right now. Um, but if I change that perspective and I look at what I did right now compared to one baby step prior, I will feel like I achieved everything. So it's 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 about perspective the process is the process it's slow it takes time and uh it requires time management it requires uh, management period but the perspective is what um makes us crazy um because if we choose oops if we choose a, a a certain perspective that feels completely unrealistic uh, then of course we'll feel like 
a complete failure. Um, is that fair? Um, it's not fair on us. Um, is that wrong? It's not wrong because we are free to choose whatever perspective we want to assess our work. Um, it's just a waste. It's a waste of time. So um, I invite you rather to compare what you have right now to what you had uh, five minutes ago. Um, it's better. Um, it's better to uh, think this way, I think. So since, well, it's just like first hour. So I feel like I need to sort of like speed up a little bit more because I wanted to bring a, a sense of first notes everywhere and I don't have it everywhere. Um, I'm gonna start using some white, even though um, for many reasons, I prefer to hold off on white because it's a very hard color to paint over. So, um, and knowing that uh, edges are going to change, um, knowing that two things, edges are going to change, paint is a hard uh, color to uh, work with when it's set first. So why do I want myself, um, uh, or why do I want to uh, make myself or make my life difficult by adding white paint early in the process. It's not wrong to do, but I know that it's gonna, um, it's gonna bite me later. So I'm just gonna add it and see what happens. And we'll talk about titanium white, by the way, because um, the, the challenge about uh, being so many months away from each other is that we don't have that human um, touch. The benefit or the positive, not benefit, but the positive thing is that we have learned so much about paint um, during this time, so much. And um, we, for example, we addressed titanium white and why it may work sometimes and why sometimes it may not work at all. I'll talk about it uh, later, um, especially when we do um, highlights. And then possibly a little bit of a black right here. And I need to deepen the blue on top. So I'm gonna bring some, and that would be my last, um, it would be my last application of um, first notes. And it, it's good to sort of like articulate what your steps are going to be as much as possible. So as an example, this is what I did in the last minute or so. I checked the time, it's already the first hour. I assess how much how much I need to do to complete first notes. And then I decided that I'm gonna use a little bit of white just for the purposes of that area, knowing that it's gonna probably uh, come up later and give me problems. But then I decided the final um, step on my first notes is going to be uh, the application of this blue on top. So all those things, um, as I said, you, you heard me say this before, I have to literally articulate them uh, through language uh, to sort of like make them, make them real, um, to understand that that's what's going to happen. Because if I don't think and I don't say this to myself, uh, I will not know where I'm at and I will not know what to do. Uh, I will just keep, you know, putting paint on the paper. Um, it, uh, to me, uh, it doesn't, that doesn't work. I just need to, yeah, I think so. I think that's okay. Um, so if you have a lot of drips right now on your paper, I realize that also um, during these uh, months, uh, it means that we used possibly too much medium. Uh, so it's okay to have drips because we're basically using uh, more liquid than uh, pasty stuff. But at the same time, uh, if we use too much, 
uh, then it's just going to drip. It's not a problem because we still have to put a lot of layers, but uh, it's just letting you know that um, I realized that um, I switched to adding a tad more paint and less more medium, and now I have less dripping on this stage. Um, and it, it was about, uh, it, it's a matter of like uh, learning about yourself and your process, because sometimes you can articulate things, but sometimes there are certain things that are invisible um, to us. So now I learned that um, I don't need to abuse the medium on this stage because it happens very easily because we are coming out of the wash and we feel that it worked great. So we are a little bit too shy when we go into the first notes. And then we start, but we have a tendency of, of relying too much on the medium and not so much on the paint. So there's, there's, there's a spectrum here, but it's not a wide spectrum. We have to uh, build. And if we use a lot of medium, we're not going to build and uh, things are going to start like dripping. Um, in addition to that, it depends on what support you have. Um, if you have something that it's non-porous, then um, you'll have to use even less medium because otherwise it's going to drip a lot. If you have canvas, then you'll have to use more medium because otherwise the paint's not going to stick. So it's, it's, it, it, there are many components that change uh, during this uh, stage, but it's all about learning how um, the paint acts. And also another thing that I learned in this process, uh, and I'll repeat it at the end, is that uh, if I work on this for two hours or three hours, um, and I know that I have to work again, it's a good idea to take the paint and put it flat somewhere. Uh, because otherwise, between the time that we, we apply the paint and the time that it actually dries, uh, there's a chance that some may just start moving down. So it's something that I never thought of it because when we work outside and um, we get together, we take the paint and then we put it flat in the box. And that does it, you know, it, it just needs a, a few hours and the paint sets. But because we're working now this way and our paints are not um, immediately put in a box, then I just realized that I have to make that change. All right, never mind. I'm gonna move to second notes now, uh, even though I probably need to do some work here on the hand. But I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna move to second notes. Um, I'm ten minutes in the second hour, so uh, this is where I'm at right now. I did the sketch, the wash, and I'm not fully completed with the first notes, but it's okay. I'm just gonna move to the second notes, and then I'll probably I'll I'll. I'll use second notes throughout um, the second hour, but my strategy will be to kind of like work from darker to lighter and uh, as much as possible on uh, second notes on the darker areas and see where I'm at at the 30 minute mark at the 1230 or whatever your time is um, and your time zone. Um, so, and then I'll make an assessment because it's gonna, um, it's gonna tell me if uh, I've done enough or um, if I need to uh, then move on to the landscape. So um, there are a lot of components going on, so I'm still not clear which one is gonna get featured uh, the most, but uh, that will be my strategy. Second not notes all the way for the second hour, um, 30 minutes until 12.30, not even 30 minutes, a little bit less than 30 minutes, see how far I can go, and then I'll make another assessment. So second notes, where are second notes? Basically, um, I just pixelated or color blocked. So what I'm gonna do right now, is go over again one more time from darker to lighter and find out if there are uh, any highs and lows, not if, but where are the highs and lows with the same color? So I'm gonna, you guys are professionals and amazing painters, but I'm just gonna go over second notes because I'm gonna explain again what it is. So we have a tendency of changing things right now and turning this painting into a different painting. So traditionally, which I think it's something that you owe it to yourselves to try, you owe it to yourselves to try, and then you can do whatever you want with your process. Second notes means that I'm gonna to go to the darks and find out within the same color, that's the key, the same color, I'm gonna find out what's darker and what's lighter. But I'm not gonna apply a new color 
or I'm not, unless it's a variation that requires a slight change in temperature. The second notes are not about adding color. Let's put it this way. It's not about adding color. And that's something that, you know, I see all the time because we feel, okay, so now everything's painted. You know, I see this and everything's painted. So what am I going to do here? If everything's painted, okay, well, I'm just going to use this color and see what it looks like. Um, fine. But then you're just going to do a new painting and you may have like a, at the end, 20 paintings within one surface. So try to stick with that color and make variations before you start adding uh, uh, many colors. So uh, here we go again. So I'm still using medium brush and the same. Uh, but what I'm going to do is start um, creating. This is start, right? Yeah. Start creating. And it has a little bit of gray. So see, I'm just I'm starting to that's a little bit too light. So I realized that this is slightly lighter in uh, the gray, uh, the gray, or, and it's, I, let me just kind of like get rid of whatever broken sentence. This is a little bit lighter in value than the rest of the darks. So I'm bringing a little bit of gray, not white, a little bit of gray. Um, titanium white, it's the most um, pigmented white, the most opaque, the most um, flat. So if we add a little bit too much, then it just completely ob obliterates the mix. So be careful with titanium white at this stage. We're going from darker to lighter. We're going from darker to lighter. Does it make sense to lighten up this uh, to create a tint? Yes, it does. But how are we going to make the tint? Um, I used uh, gray instead because if I added um, white, this would have been way too, way too bright. All right. So I'm just. Uh, I think this is pretty uniform. But as it goes closer to the edge, mine is a little bit too dark. So I need to lift this up, this cre create more of a tint here uh, because right now it's way too dark and there is almost like a transition. So I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna kind of like wipe it off because I need to remove the paint, especially because it's so black. Yeah, and then a little bit lighter with a tad of blue, there is a, reflection of the outside. Oh yeah. And then this from the outside needs to be um, shaped. And I'm not going to go there yet. The bottom is definitely lighter. The black at the bottom is definitely lighter. So with the gray, um, I know that this is kind of like cheesy, but one of the things that revolutionized painting when the impressionist came into the picture was the fact that for them, they uh, separated subject matter from painting and observation. And it's something that it was so, um, big at the time that people thought they were crazy. But the Impressionist did not look at the object um, and associate it with what the object should look like. They looked at a part of the object and they painted what they saw. So I know that, um, you know, you know, that was a long time ago and painting has developed a lot and blah, blah, blah. But to me, Impressionism um, to me and to uh, other uh, people, artists and art critics, was a revolution in uh, scientific uh, achievements in painting, not um, in the fact that, you know, they, oops, they just um, had uh, different inspiration or different subject matter. It was a, a scientific um, evolution. They started painting what they saw. Uh, these in a non-associating way 
with the shapes or the objects that they were in front of them as subjects. And that's why they created things that are so spectacular. Because they're not associated with the object, they're associated with the observation. We recognize them as objects, but um, they were painted in a very um, almost scientific way. Paint what you see. I never understood that, you know, it's okay. I thought it was nonsense. What do you mean? I'm already seeing things. What are you talking about? Um, I never understood what is like paint what you see. Because um, to me, it was like, you know, I'm already seeing, so and I'm already doing it. Um, but then I understood that we are not doing it. Um, we paint what we associate with not what we see gosh i hope you you're you mute it because <laughs> this is a philosophy class you guys <laughs> um no bear with me it makes uh, it makes sense my point is that uh right now what i'm trying to do is trying to find out if there are any um variations in the black that i put because that's what's what's all about in this stage in the second notes trying to identify the darks and the lights, if there's if there are any, and how they compare. Yeah. So already this kind of like gives me more of a softer look on the edge, so it doesn't feel like a cutout. And I haven't even checked um, the edges because the edges need to be softer because um, the camera, the lens of the camera picked up a very specific um, depth of field that it's focused on my face. And then um, it's focused also on the legs of the figure, but then there are certain areas that are not in focus. So I think I want to incorporate that softness as well. But um, what I'm gonna do is, this is like super black. So I'm gonna go for it and then bring bring that, block it out. I need to understand that um, because there is a face on my painting, not always that has to be the focus of my work. And it's simple, um, it's a simple premise, but um, it's something that we have to break and we have to unlearn. Because the minute we have a face in our paintings, that's where we go. We we just feel like, you know, that needs to be painted and it needs to be recognizable and not necessarily. Not necessarily. So um, what I'm going to do right now, my strokes are shorter, by the way, by the way. Yeah, I think that's okay. And maybe what I'll do is I'll just, um, you know what? I'm making a little pause here because I think I need to paint the skin of the fingers. And um, so I'm bringing some burnt sienna and raw umber because it's a darker shadow. That's too light, this is too light. And I just need to bring those. Uh, Yeah, I'm just basically um, uh, putting the shape. Um, yeah, I think that's enough for now. And I'm going back to darks. That was a little pause. And what I tried to do is catch up with the work of the first notes that I didn't do on the fingers. And yeah, just moving forward, one stroke at a time. Uh, trying to, not to get stressed out about how much I achieve and how much likeness. Um, I am, I'm, 
I mean business. I'm focused on observation. Uh, I'm focused on what I actually see. I don't care what this looks like. I'm not interested in worrying about that. It's a waste of uh, energy. So I'll just make a decision later. But right now, um, I'm just observing and coming up with uh, conclusions or decisions. I'm looking at the subject, spending a lot of time there. And then I'll just, uh, yeah, I'll just move to the next, uh, to the next thing. I'm just going to basically, yeah. Um, okay. And then I'm going to move to the darker area at the bottom. There, there's something about the uh, landscape that involves um, visual planes. I didn't even bring those up, but we have things that are closer to us, things that are further away, and a lot of things in between those two planes. So I'm using this terminology right now because I feel I want to do the darks um, on the dashboard and the rear view mirror first. And then I'm just going to go, this is pretty dark, so there are no variations. Uh, what am I doing? I'm doing second notes. What are second notes? Variations of the same color. What are not second notes? Um, coloring. Um, ornating, decorating um, the, the same area. Um, ultimately, uh, what do I want to do? Uh, I can do whatever I want. So um, no one's telling me that this is right or wrong. But it's important to know um, where we are and what we're doing, and then decide if that's for us or not. Uh, I'm sticking to the traditional approach, which means I'm not going to make my life, com my life complicated and I'm going to just use the same color and create highs and lows. So this is a little lighter. So right now I'm just going to create a little lighter version. And then maybe, should I do a little bit lighter? Why not? Yeah, so I'm actually now possibly not following uh, guidelines because I'm already doing lighter notes, but it's okay. Yeah, I think that's okay. And then some more blue here using the medium. Oops, I need to clean up my brush because I have a lot of uh, light color. And that blue is super deep. We, I'm gonna bring some ultramarine blue. Because a, a good way to make it darker is by bringing a darker blue rather than just using uh, the paints gray. Paints gray is a great uh, color because it's cold. Oh my gosh, this reads almost purple. It's not a good color. No, I need to be very careful. The ultramarine is almost purple. All right, let me just kind of like bring a, a, a thicker layer here. And I know that I'm painting um, an area of the painting that may not be important because we say, you know, what's important is uh, the view in the mirror, the portrait. Uh, but I believe that every uh, brushstroke that we add on the painting really helps the entirety of the painting. So even though I'm working on this area right now that's far away and it doesn't seem like it's important, um, it is. It's more important than we think because it just contributes to um, the rest of the painting. Whoops. A little bit right here. Careful with your whites. Titanium white, it's powerful. And then I'm just gonna, um, I'm doing some blending, some uh, 
really rough blending. I'm not uh, very careful, but, and then I'm gonna bring some lighter blue. One piece at a time, we are, we are uh, builders, we are sculpting. Um, painting is drawing and painting is sculpting. And, and yeah, I think that's, I read this, uh, the painting is drawing, I read it in a book uh, from 1920s, uh, an art book and how um, wrong we are, not us, but um, mostly um, art schools and art education in separating uh, drawing and painting into two different things as if they were two different disciplines. When in fact, it's the same thing um, the only thing that changes is the medium. So the whole entire um, art education in the 19th and 20th century are based on this separation between drawing and painting and the author um, considered that this was wrong. And I agree, um, there is no separation. Painting is drawing, just using a different medium. Um, all the problems that came with that, um, you know, people felt like they needed to learn drawing before they jumped into painting. That is not, um, it's not good. <laughs> it's okay, it's not good, but it's just wrong. It's not our fault, by the way, because I've heard it many times. I need to I, need, I feel, I've heard it many times, I feel like I need to be able to sketch first and then I'll be able to jump to painting. No, <laughs> just do both. <laughs> it's the same thing. All right, I just did a little bit of the console, um, a little bit of separation. What's the timing? Oh, I'm approaching 12.30, so, all right, I, I have three minutes, so I still can do a lot. So let me just go back to the darker areas on the actual face. And um, I actually, yeah, on the actual face, Never mind. so. So I'm, I'm gonna block it out. So this area, I didn't do it during the uh, uh, first notes. This is what uh, we talked about um, last Tuesday about skin tones um, are not um, based on racial um, distinctions. Skin tones are skin tones. We all have dark and light um, shades uh, on, us, on our skin. I'm talking about painting. Um, obviously, but this is a good example. Sometimes the light comes from behind or the, the image uh, or the mirror or whatever. And then all of a sudden our skin is darker. And sometimes uh, someone um, shoots a, a flash uh, two inches from our face and then uh, the skin is totally burned out uh, and, and white. So, I'm not gonna get caught up. Always have in that in the back of your mind because you know you feel like you're getting into something, and you have to tame it, um, and then that's gonna be a problem. And I'm gonna bring some darks. Well, that's got something that's gonna have to get developed, obviously. Uh, not everything has to be super descriptive. Um, whoops, sorry, I just touched it. Okay, um, all right, so I'm, I still have a minute. A minute here, it's a precious, precious time. 
So I'm just gonna use the minute to create highs and lows on the back of the iPhone because it's not the same. So what are second notes? Variations of the same color. What are not second notes? Um, just uh, making things more colorful just for the sake of it. So I'm just gonna try to see what kind of variation of lights and darks I have on this iPhone. This is a little bit uh, darker on top. Whoops, I need more paints gray. Yeah, I think that's good. So I'm gonna try to create a flat surface. Why is this important? Because every square inch of your painting matters. Um, and that is not um, an insult to any uh, social movement. Um, but yes, everything counts. Let's just kind of like use the same terminology that we've, we use to uh, describe this. Every single square inch of our painting counts. How about that? A little darker here. I'm working on the back of an iPhone. Does it have anything to do with the rest of the painting? Maybe not, but maybe this is going to be what's going to move a, a viewer that um, is going to recognize this. Oh my gosh, this is so clever. We just don't know. Everything counts. It's a little bit darker on top. Maybe, um, yeah. Yeah, I look at this dimension right here. My goodness. You can see that there's a light sort of like reflecting that it's not frontal. It comes from the side. And then there's something a little bit darker here. Uh, with, a, with a dashboard on this, if I compare this baby step, this baby step, with the baby step that I did a minute ago at 1230, I achieved so much. I feel so good about myself. I am so confident. Um, I'm so happy. This is so exciting. I just have a rush of adrenaline that makes me want to do more. If I compare this baby step with the photograph, I will feel like, uh, you know, I, I, I need to give up uh, painting altogether and you know, I suck and then I'm terrible at this and it's not worth it and uh, so it's about mentality or perspective or approach and my advice is always compare it with a step prior and see how far you've gone yes there's more um uh to do and a long way to uh achieve something but um just kind of like stick with where you are <laughs> all right so 12 30 i'm gonna assess i'm just gonna take a minute and basically, uh, this is where I'm at. Second notes on only the darks. It's not finished. And there's so much that I see right now that I want to change. And, but I think um, what my strategy in the next uh, half an hour, how I want to do this. So this area right here, it's less. Uh, it takes less space. So I think my strategy would be to try to put maybe 10 minutes on this, uh, 15 minutes tops. And then I will basically, I think I want to concentrate only on the reflection of the mirror. Maybe um, the actual mirror um, could be the focal point. I'm, I'm making that decision right now. So, um, so this is what I talk about, or, or, or trying to give you an example of what it means to strategize, to assess, to always uh, pause and, and see how you're going to move things forward. This is the difference of me questioning what I'm doing uh, feeling terrible about how I, uh, what I've done so far, um, beating myself up because I didn't do this or I didn't do that or this looks ugly or this looks, uh, I'm not in that state of mind. I am right now concentrated only in 30 minutes, I'm 15 to this wide, and then I'm just going to move to that. Um, judgment is not part of my equation. Um, period <laughs> all right so i'm going to start uh with some lights i'm bringing some white right now titanium white um so here we go 
this is a little bit lighter so i'm just gonna it's not pure white i'm mixing this titanium white with some of the gray that i have yeah that's good and that's gonna from the outside it's gonna help me uh, draw the windshield wiper because i didn't know how to draw it because it's so there's so much going on but if i just shave it from the outside it's gonna do it it's gonna do it minimum minimum 50 percent of your time should be spent watching the subject minimum because you'll realize how much you can um, extract how much information you can extract and how much is going to help you to uh, make changes if you spend more time looking at your painting i don't know I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, um, Jen, if you can, because just for the kicks of it, because there is another blog that I really like. It's called Two Coats of Paint. Two Coats okay. of Paint. It's a blog. Um, it's based on the East Coast in New York, and it's it's really good. But recently, one of their posts said, I think it's two coats of pain.com, talked about if it makes sense to make abstract paintings right now. Ah, oh, how oh. much I love to, to read that. <laughs> okay, I'll find it. <laughs> it was so good. Um, Basically, the answer was uh, uh, no, <laughs> but just keep doing because the, uh, the author or the writer was uh, an abstract painter. And I think um, she was questioning, I think it was a female writer. And I was like, oh, yes. <laughs> um, it was interesting. I don't want to, oops, I keep the... I don't want to um, add gasoline to the fire, but I am going to right now because there's um, this amazing, I see it in an amazing way, purifying energy that is trying to take down everything that it's not working for anyone. I'm not talking just about, you know, the confederacy, gosh, I need to practice that word, confederacy, confederacy. Uh, monuments and all that stuff but I feel like culturally there is a, a need to purge um, get things out uh, spring cleaning um, of everything concepts um, language um, I, I think it's positive it's it's a, it's it, it's it, it's a need for purifying clearing to clearing uh, energy so maybe abstraction is something we need to take down now. Uh, it represents uh, a very patriarchal, patriarchal uh, uh, period of painting that was focused on a very um, privileged uh, um, demographic and that had, was never inclusive, it was never um, considered uh, never considered other um the diverse voices um so yeah okay that's it my next my next uh, item on the list uh, to figuratively take down let's take down abstract painting <laughs> um again it's a good thing that laura isn't here <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's I like know. all she wants to do. <laughs> we love you, Laura. If you ever know, listen. Yeah. If you're watching this. <laughs> all right. So time. Yeah, I'm just going to do some red on this area. Oops, that's way too, way too pigmented. And uh, I'm not interested in the buildings. 
but I have to do something there because I, I don't want to do it just kind of like, uh, let me see if I, whoops, I may just kind of like pixelate something. All right, time for the small brush. Small brush. And what am I doing right now? I am drawing with a small brush. Painting is drawing. And uh, I'm gonna do some palm trees here. Simplification, simplification. I, I, this basically, I just, um, I'm painting out loud when, uh, when I paint with you guys. I'm painting out loud. Uh, and then I'll just do a few um, Sarah-like uh, pointillistic um, uh, strokes that may not look like anything, but um, yeah. That's not what's important here. Some gray, and then this is much lighter. The curve, the curve. Um, I say, uh, going back to this controversial taking down abstraction. Uh, so before everything went down, um, this past year, some museums have been trying, um, it's never enough, but have been trying to um, uh, feature um, collections of paintings by female um, artists during the uh, 50s, all the way through, I mean, 50s and 60s, uh, abstract female painters in New York um, in the 60s and 50s, which there were, but they were not considered, they were not considered serious uh, artists. And uh, now, um, I think the most famous one, it was um, Hilda. Um, I think it was at the, it wasn't the Guggenheim, was it? Uh, in New York, Hilda something, an abstract painter. I don't know, Jen, if you can magically, if not, I'll find out. Hilda, it almost sounds like Hilda Klimt, something like that. Okay. But um, yeah, so, and people went gaga for her work. Um, one of the most visited exhibitions uh, was either the Whitney, I think either the Whitney Museum or the Guggenheim, one of those two. Um, and yeah, I, I think even earlier, I think she was pre-abstraction, you guys. She was freaking pre-abstraction and then, um, yeah, history erased her and her work. I'm trying to okay, the, the, I have her. It's uh, Hilma Hilma Off Clint. Yes. Yeah, and Boom. at the Guggenheim. And what year? Uh, you, tell us the um, uh, the year she lived. The years she lived and. Okay, so she was born in October of 1862 and died in October of 1944. All right, so... She's Swedish. Mm -hmm. Did she live in... Uh, she, uh, she lived in New York? Let's see... Or no? Um, it doesn't seem so. It oh, okay. seems everything oh, wow. looks very Swedish. Okay. <laughs> Right. I can't pronounce anywhere where she lived. Okay. Um, and her resting place is in Stockholm. Um, wow. It seems as though she was a group in a group of women. Okay. Belonged to a group called the Five, a circle of women who shared her belief in the importance of trying to make contact with what she called the High Masters, often by way of seances. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. Okay, let's see. A considerable body of her abstract work, work predates the first purely abstract compositions by Kandinsky. So yep. yeah, basically they're saying that she was the first Western abstract artist. Never heard of her. <laughs> Go yep. figure. Um, if you can upload one of the paintings, that would be awesome. You got it. You want the one from the Guggenheim? Because she's... 
Should I do the most recent? So uh, you can, uh, any of those, but uh, my favorite, she has a painting of a black swan and a white swan. Okay, I'll find that it. It's just uh, fabulous. It's just amazing. But any of the circles and stuff, great color sense. The paintings are gorgeous. Um, so, yeah, well, there you go. Yeah. So, she, yeah, she feels very contemporary before the, right. So, okay, 15 minutes and I'm working on, if you notice, I just kind of like started doing some architectural details and some cast shadow. Sometimes the cast shadow can achieve more than the actual object. I'm always a believer that um, it's important both the positive and the negative space or, uh, yeah, and I have like a drip here. That means that I use a lot of paints, but that's okay. Boom, gone. Um, I'm gonna try, I think because of the, that shape, I'm gonna try to paint that figure. I think it's so hilarious. So I'll probably have to paint it from the outside. So I'm gonna give it a try. I'm gonna shift uh, gears here. And instead of like going to the mirror image, I'm gonna challenge myself and see if I can bring uh, any sense of shape on this hilarious uh, legs. So again, I'm just, uh, my panic mode is kind of like uh, showing up a little bit here because I feel um, this is getting difficult, but this is what I'm gonna tell myself. I'm gonna paint what I see and not regard anything else. So, and that for me, it, it works. So it takes more or less time. Remember, this is a slow process. So I'm not worried. I'm just going to use my observation, be patient, uh, feed my decision making based on what I see and not what I think, and especially not what I uh, associated with. And then uh, there'll be time for, there'll be time for um, judgment. But right now, it's not the time for that. Sometimes, you know, when you when we are so focused and concentrated, there's not enough room in our, our brain to do anything else. So I'm just gonna bring some of this uh, emo right here and see if I can do the sheen of that leg. And then the shadow on the leg from the skirt. And this is kind of like a bluish. I'm using a small brush. Yeah, it's just, it's just that, just one baby step after another. And don't give up, don't get overwhelmed and rely on observation rely on observation um, coming up with something that you don't see is not going to um, it's going to be a gamble it's not gonna it's it's, it's not gonna really um, help you
Okay, I'm just gonna clean this up. Let's see. This looks like a slightly, it's starting to look like a leg. <laughs> um yeah i'm so this is the thing about um painting sometimes that we take it so personal that it's a matter of pride and um we're like you know what i'm just gonna make this happen and that's okay i feel like that sometimes you know i i'm always feel like you know you want to take it on let's let's do it but you have to be also careful because um pride could be toxic uh, when it comes to uh, painting. You're gonna find yourself in a struggle with yourself to achieve. It's again, you know, uh, uh, needs versus wants. You want this to, you know, look like something. You want it to be correct. You want it to be. Um, exact um is that what you need maybe not maybe what we need is to kind of like go over another part of the painting all right so i think i'm just uh i'm not gonna spend too much time here because i am uh, i'm pretty good at um pulling out when I feel I'm in a competition with myself. And I feel right now I am, it's never good. So, cause there's, it's, again, it's all about that pride of achieving. So this is probably a good example of what you shouldn't do. Okay, I'm gonna stop right now. I'm gonna stop right now. I got um, two legs. I know I want to do so much there, but um, yeah, let's just kind of like move. I have like, uh, oh my gosh, I just got like uh, 10 minutes, a little bit less than 10 minutes. All right, uh, where I'm at right now, I'm still doing second notes. And where I'm at right now is that that uh, basically slice of cityscape uh, looks much more developed. I'm comparing it with the baby step before. And I feel like it, I achieved a look of a sidewalk and a street and something that's vertical. It doesn't read like a palm tree right now. And I need to spend more time on that area. But um, it's okay because it's enough. And it's important to, um, yeah, it's important to uh, find out uh, when you have enough. Um, I think right now I'm going to spend, I, we can do a lot in um, eight minutes. I think I'm gonna go to the face. I think I'm gonna go to the face. And possibly, I'm using two brushes, the medium and the small. I have this like really uh, crazy uh, brush. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, it's a little crazy, but it's a little bit smaller than the medium. And I'm gonna use that. Um, and this is a good time to bring your, uh, your light tones. Uh, so you can start mixing with titanium white, but again, titanium white at the level that we are right now, you guys, uh, it's, a, it's a tone that um, blogs a lot and makes things very chalky. So um, be careful because it's funny because at the very beginning, we never questioned the chalkiness of white. In fact, we always felt it wasn't chalky enough. Uh, we felt the white wasn't covering things enough, and you know we always had issues with that. Well, because we've been painting more, and then now we realize what the uh, titanium one, titanium one, titanium white does. I feel like you know it's something that we really need to be careful about because it can really. Um, block out way too much way too much it's funny because you know never think uh, that that would have been the case but it is the case all right so i'm just gonna work on whoops 
on the edge, I need to shave a little bit. Ah, it's too light. You know, it just did a stroke and it's way too light. Um, so a quick interjection here to say that uh, the reason why some people add zinc white to their palette is because zinc white is the most transparent and kind of like warm white on the palette. So sometimes we don't have zinc white, but it would be interesting to uh, bring it. Sometimes um, using that white will lighten up things without making them chalky. In fact, I think I'm going to order zinc white. Oh no, I have zinc white somewhere. And then maybe for, uh, I, I want to test it first. Yeah, that's way too light. Because those are the main two whites that I would say uh, are common practice. And I never got into zinc white because I just thought that zinc white um, was, you know, I, didn't, I never understood it. I never understood the actual um, function of it. And then we had a session when we talked about uh, seven kinds of white paint, seven. And then I learned, I realized that the zinc white could be a good option when we uh, want to lighten up without blocking out. Hmm. All right. So bone structure first, never facial features first. Bone structure. Uh, I'm still doing second notes. So check where the lights and the darts are on the skin first before you even dare to paint an eyeball. Um, yeah, check out those first. And then... Um, then we'll be ready for eyeballs and um, all that kind of stuff. But bone structure comes first. A few strokes at a time. I feel I need a little bit more of a reddish note. This is darker on top. I need to bring some maybe black because it's really fading here. Okay, yeah, I got it. Bone structure. Yes, darker. The right temple is much darker. And I'm already blending slightly, so. Yeah, and the car seat. Is this a car seat? Oh, yeah. Oh, this is so, this is, it's always like that. Two minutes before um, the session ends. And uh, now I feel like I'm, I'm in an amusement park. Uh, I have the same thrill and joy about moving the painting forward. I'm excited. Um, I feel like now I can start reaping the, the, benefits of my decisions and I feel like now the painting starts. <laughs> it's always like that. Um, so um, within the next two minutes I'm going to explain to you how um, what we're going to do basically. So um, we're going to take uh, we're going to pause the recording and we're going to pause the video and then we're going to take a 10 minute break um, please upload, if you want some feedback, um, critique and criticism are two different things in my book. Um, so I give critique, uh, kind of like to help you, um, hopefully to help you move forward and, um, make notes. Uh, if you want that, you can up upload your photo or send a photo to Jen and she'll upload it for you. And then we do it. Yeah, we just do a critique, uh, if you don't, I encourage you to do that because it's it's fun and it's good and uh, people like to learn from other people's feedback. But if you don't, 
um, feel ready. So then um, you're not obliged, obliged to do it. Um, something super stupid, but or I should say silly. So I don't know. Well, I end up in one of those rabbit holes uh, in the internet that um, uh, mentioned all the new words that were added to the dictionary, um, the Oxford Dictionary, I think, uh, in June of 2020. Every every month, there are uh, dozens of words that get incorporated. Um, why did I say that? Uh, because there's a word that it just made me chuckle. Um, uh, farmet. Farmet uh, is a small farm. And boom, we're going to pause and take a break now <laughs> so you can digest this word, farmet. All right, we'll see you in 10 minutes. I'm going to resume the, oh my gosh. So we are light and the microphone, and this is just a big production, you guys. All right, I guess that's good. That's, that's good, right? Yeah. Uh, so welcome. I need to move this. Uh, it's OK. I'm not moving anything. Um, so thanks for um, painting with us. And uh, I hope the break uh, was good. and. I'm just gonna right now immediately. Um, I'm just gonna move um, to the shared folder right away before we start doing uh, any feedback. I just wanted to point out uh, some images that Jen uploaded that are hilarious. Yes, Andrew Bush uh, photograph Angeline. Uh, oh, this is recent. This is recent, Jen. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah, it seemed that this um, was his most recent showing, Drive. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of the, but like you said, a lot of the um, photos are from earlier, so. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, Angeline. Yeah. So, and this is the setup. These are the paintings from Harry Stushinov or whatever. Um, you pronounce his last name, but yeah, um, he does acrylic and I just went over the Etsy shop and uh, his paintings are, have a very low hor horizon line. He's focused mostly on sky, but really simple stuff, but really nice, I would say. And this is the one that we uh, showed during, during the inspiration. And this is Hilda Hilma. Uh, oh, okay, well, Monday, uh, Monday Muse is going to be Hilma, for sure. So, uh, amazing stuff. This is one of the uh, Swan paintings. Uh, I thought this was beautiful. And he, she has a few, um, a few more of Swans. Um, and yeah, this is the one that, the ones that were shown at the Guggenheim. You said Guggenheim, right? Yeah, she had a show at the Guggenheim. Um, and is this one? I can't see. What well, What's the title of this one, Julio? This one. See. This. Oh, uh, it's just a swan. Oh, the number swan. Okay, so yeah, I think this one was at the Guggenheim. But then there's um, a collection of paintings. This one, the ten largest, okay. and that is. Uh, I don't know if it's currently at the uh, Stockholm. The ten largest at the museum. It, it, well, yeah, it looks like it was in 2013. Uh, so. Not sure if it's part of their permanent collection or what. It probably is. Stunning? I know that there were some of them were at the Guggenheim, and I know the only person we know of that went to see that show is Shannon. Um, oh. She, she actually was in New York, and then she was mesmerized. Uh, oh she, wow! Yeah, she didn't know about it, but she I know that she mentioned it. Um, but yeah, these were featured. Some of them were featured. This was my. Um, and then, uh, so I think um, this is Hania. So I don't know if Hania, you are still there or not, but I didn't see, I'm gonna do another refresh. I, well, I actually am um, in the process, I'm about halfway through uploading Hania's right at this moment. Okay. So if you just give me 60 yeah. seconds. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, we and should then, be good. 
I don't see Chloe. So then we'll just uh, kind of like go over with Hanyas. And everyone, so this is basically um, what we do because we have people joining us from the UK um, and it's late or it's later there. We give feedback if they're here um, uh, first, just because uh, to respect their time, their time zone, basically. And it's in, in gratitude for joining us from so far. Um, but let me do a refresh and see if it's- Yeah, they, they're up. Okay, perfect. And uh, this is a beautiful photograph, uh, Hania. And see if I have, Oh my gosh, this looks awesome. Okay. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. You got it. Let me see if I can get her ah. on here. Um, she is not here, is she? Oh, I think she is. I, I oh, am here. Is. Hey! hey. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hania, thank you so much. This looks spectacular and fantastic. And I'm so happy that you brought in a theme that seems like it's more familiar to you rather than all the uh, subjects that we brought up. And so Absolutely. I love the fact that you, you incorporated the seascape with the open window. So where is this? Honey? Yeah. This is on the, on the coast in, in, the, in, um, in France. Um, after the motorhome, we actually woke up one morning and this was my view from, from the motorhome, totally isolated. With this wow. amazing view, yeah. Incredible. And um, what time of the year yeah. was it? Ah, oh, it was like this time of the year. Beautiful oh. time of the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's just such such an inspiring thing to look out of, you know. Yeah. Um, this, this time in the morning, yeah. So I, 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 we have many photographs from the from the van in in um, in the forest, but I just thought the seascape was so spiritual and so awakening and so yeah. so nice for this time for for what we're going through right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think it's visually stunning, and I love the fact that you incorporated uh, the actual edge of the window because I think that's important to kind of like. Uh, conceptually so I, I think i love the distinction between the the sky uh, a little bit lighter and then that you brought a certain um a, a lower level of value on uh, through the glass so that reads really well and i know how you work with your landscapes and uh, i feel like you know if you're interested in continue working on this i love the fact that you have a a, a plan here something that really grounds uh, you know the ocean with uh, with the sand, so you could you could consider that you also you could also consider making a distinction or more of a not separation but a distinction between possibly the um, the water and uh, and the sand. There's something that I feel it's really beautiful in the image. There's also uh, something about the light of the sky reflecting on the surface of the water. So I think yeah. you brought it, you brought it, but um, I just feel like bringing more of that silver could help you, uh, could help you as well. Um, I just love this yeah. very broken, not broken, but sinuous line that separates um, the, the reflective water, but be, because, because of the, um, because of the sky being uh, kind of like cloudy, it seems, you know, there's more of a yes. reflection of that silver note on the edge. So hmm. to me, this is really interesting. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, it's totally great. It has to be totally grounded, and and I'm working on it. This is I've worked very fast tonight. Which I is know. For me. <laughs> <laughs> I've got color. <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's good. I'm so happy that you know you 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 moved it faster. But yeah, I mean, I have, I mean you create your own magic. So I, I, I'm really confident that this is just gonna become even better, but um, just a few notes here and there, and then I just can't wait to see how it plays out. But it's Thanks. gorgeous, honey. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I'm working on it. <laughs> as, as usual, no, it's beautiful and really important. So I really appreciate it. Thank you. I much appreciate your um, oh. critique as well, yeah, and your um, knowledge. <laughs> oh. 
well, yeah, thank you. And um, so I'm just gonna basically, oh my gosh, there's so much incredible stuff going on. Let me just kind of like uh, order it. I'm gonna, um, Julie, I'm just gonna point this. I'm gonna uh, see if I can organize. Um, I'm gonna try to organize the, oops, uh, one second, um, the images. Uh, and. Because I know that you guys uh, uploaded it, and I just wanted to. Oops. Oh, no, never mind. Never mind. Um, uh, okay, I think I'm just gonna put it right here. Sorry, guys, but yeah. Okay, here we go. So yeah. Um, all right, perfect. So yeah, um, this is a great image, uh, fantastic. I don't know how you took this image, Julie, but it's just brilliant because- <laughs> I did it with my iPhone. <laughs> I just kept the phone lens just at the very edge of it. But I did, wow. it, I did it myself with the phone. Was it, is it, wasn't it difficult? I found it very wow. difficult to take a picture of myself with a phone wow. without showing the phone. Very difficult. <laughs> it would, and I have a ton of them where there's a corner of it or a full phone. But this one, I somehow I just leaned forward and, you know, I chose it because it, it was sort of that longing, wistful, um, wanting to be out there, not in the car. Because yeah. I do think your, your idea in concept is so great that that's one of the safe places we can be, but yet we're so isolated there too. But we're out in the world, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I can tell you this looks amazing and I love uh, the interpretation and I love the values of the car. And I know it's a work in progress, like uh, yeah. all the paintings are, but um, I just think that it's on a really good uh, path. And um, I love the greens as well. I just feel like um, you have a green, a great sort of a variation of greens. Um, so yeah, I would just, it's worth continuing forward. I love the fact that the mirror is scrubbed. There's something really cool about that. Um, and I think, yeah, I mean, the greens here, um, I, I feel I would make a distinction some somehow, maybe not a distinction, but I feel like there's a slight reflection uh, on the surface of the mirror that makes the greens here and also perhaps a little bit fuzzier. Uh -huh. uh, they're not as sharp. So I would probably, if you continue, which I think you should, um, I would make that distinction here. I mean, a little bit fuzzier. And I know you brought the blue on mm -hmm. top. Um, so maybe frostier. Okay. Yeah. So, so it looks like it's not see-through. It looks like it's, uh, there's a it's surface weird. there. Right. Good idea. Yeah. But this is just brilliant. The car is brilliant. Um, your uh, placement is great. Um, so I, uh, other than that, uh, maybe another thing I would say is there's a, uh, the, the sky is very dark. It's darker than the greens. Yeah. So I feel like this is reverse. If I squint my eyes, uh, there's a, sort of like a paleness in the sky. Mm -hmm. um, so consider that because it's going to create more of an open space if you wanted to. Yes, that's a good idea. I had it lighter and then I just put a darker blue in them because it seems too washed out, but I think you're right. I think also if you consider as well, you know, I, I always talk about continuity. So consider to bring some greens on the other side of the frame of the car. So uh -huh. it looks like they're pushed back um, and, and you are kind of like closer. Because right now, um, the, the greens stop right here on the edge. And because they don't continue, um, mm -hmm. it's sort of like a hard interruption. So I would just bring some outside. Okay, that's outside good. The frame. Yeah, and I see there should be a little green on the reflection in the car too. Right. You know, I, I, it's I so mean, great to me. see. Yeah. I know you're going to start the more you work, the more you're going to see, but I think this is pretty brilliant. The way you have it here, this is pretty brilliant. I would, I would focus on other stuff because this is okay. gorgeous. Yeah. It doesn't have to be any more. Uh, well, specific. I have to work more on the greens it, there. They pop out too much. I think it, there's a lot more dark in there and it's just gotten lighter and I would lighter. Probably a little bit. And then, yeah, mostly like background, not, not too much work. If you, I mean, if you are up for it, it's totally worth it because it's such a, an original um, view uh, and an original painting, all of them, because it's not, a, not very usual, usual um, mm -hmm. to have this subject matter. And I think this is really cool. Great. 
I'll work on it and send it to you. And I did work on my self-portrait in the mask, and I'm going to send oh, that to you. Cool. Yes, please, because so, people had a great reaction to um, one portrait that we posted from Susan. So I can wait to post more. I think it's so now. Great. Okay. I but don't post my old one. I'm still no, 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 no. I that's why I didn't. Yeah, because <laughs> okay. Susan sent me one after. Um, okay. You know, she worked a little bit more. So. Thank you. I love being here with you. It just oh. kept going and it's so nice to hear you ramble and to hear you <laughs> philosophize. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thanks, miss you. You're very, you're very <laughs> kind, you. but yeah. It's thank you. Such a pleasure to have you. So thank you. Okay. All right. So I'm going to move um, to, I'm just going to, this is a gorgeous, I mean, Lois, come on. This is so... <laughs> Incredible. I, Let me just I uh, like the the lines, the composition. The, yeah, the shape. yeah. What I'm doing, I'm just gonna move it right next to the your photo so we can uh kind of I mean compare it but with uh with a grain of salt because it's not about right. lightness. So um yeah, let, I just put it right next to it. Let me see if I can. Yeah, here we go. I love this painting. This is so beautiful, so beautiful. Oh. And I love your expression. I like uh, the glasses. Um, absolutely fantastic. And it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just uh, the, I was the a way it is. Today. I don't know. Say that again? I was a little more focused or something today. I think oh. <laughs> I, it was it's kind of structural. Do you know it's what I mean? A, yeah. I, it's I've a been fun. doing a lot of organic you know, leaves and trying to find those shapes. So. It's fantastic. I mean, the way you have it, uh, this, the way you have it like that, it's just, I love the darkness of the blouse because sometimes things get lost, but um, the cast shadow that sort of like um, flows down with and merges with the shadow of the blouse, those things uh, make an impact. I love the handle of the car. It's just, it's, you have it in a great spot. If anything, if anything, um, not that it, I mean, uh, again, I'm, yes, please. Ha I'm no. having a, a, almost like a forensic eye for the sake of it, but I just feel like um, this color, um, and it's about continuation. Only when I see the photograph, I understand that this is part of the building, but yeah. without the photograph, it just feels like it's something inside of the car, a, a different Good. object. Yeah. Good idea. So if you bring this continuation, I just feel like then it just reads differently and part of the building. And you're going to bring perspective and uh, transparency, I guess. So That's but easy don't, enough. don't touch it too much. This is just gorgeous. What about the, let's see, my left cheek? I, you know, because I did have some white and stuff on there, so to put any more shadow on it, it was the I left, uh, the so one I, that, yes, on the car, the one that's oh, on the, on the car. car, yes. Um, I just kind of waited to do any more shadow because I didn't want it to get smeary and lose stuff, you know. So I thought I, I might go back in and do just a little bit more on top. I, like I, I don't yeah, know, I think well, I could um, open it though. In, if, if anything, you know these sort of like brownish uh, tones that you have on the forehead? Yeah. I would yeah. probably kind of like bring something darker here because it feels very cut. Yeah. The rest, I think it's fine, but I would bring some sort of like a slight darkness on, on that area just because then, yeah. it, then what you do is you're correlating the uh, shadow on the car with the shadow on your skin and it feels like it makes sense yeah i think so too but i like the shape i mean i'm looking at this now and also i'm seeing that if you want it um i would work on the neck as well i feel like the mm -hmm. neck could uh, because i feel like it's very similar to the value of the face and mm -hmm. it's darker um it's darker on the photograph so if you darken the neck, you're going to push it back. And I feel like your head's going to feel m much better integrated with the rest of the uh, neckline. Yeah, those are good notes for sure. But I mean, we're going like ne with mag magnifying glass because it's gorgeous. Oh, thanks. Yeah, oh, I'm, thanks. I'm, I'm so happy that um, <laughs> you joined. You know. Of course, I love it.
love and, you guys. And, you know, I have, we, we're super grateful and um, it, it just makes us happy. It makes everyone happy, you know, to see everyone's work. So for we're sure. thankful for it. So we're here. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we're not this is an expression um I, I love the fact that it also expresses your mood you're like you know what screw this i'm sick of it <laughs> so i like that a lot you know it's 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 not just this, the, the the landscape but it's also the mood so well done thank you hi everybody <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to move to uh, the next um, painting and uh, let's see if it loads up. Yeah, so uh, Darlene, perfect. So I'm going to do, uh, yeah, Darlene. So great image. I love simple view uh, facing forward. I like the fact that it's uh, vertical, so it's portrait. So it's something different and, and that you have like the steering wheel. So conceptually, there's something about it that feels unpredictable compared to a, a traditional kind of like a landscape so um yeah great excellent um as uh, usual it's at the very beginning that's okay no i love the botanical elements great use of green uh that to me feels the most uh sort of like um achieved um the, the, the most uh well developed i guess um so I, yeah, I would, in regards of moving forward, um, what I would say is that I would possibly concentrate more darks on the bottom part of the painting. Because I feel like that's something really nice about um, the botanical elements, but I would, um, I would really deep, deepen the, the darks at the bottom. Another thing that I would say, uh, consider uh, making this more uh, and, and inconspicuous because I feel like it's so strong. I don't, I don't know if I should get that's a reflection. I don't know if that's too much. I think I should get rid of it. It's I think so. I would agree with you, and because I know it's there, you can do it almost as a glaze if you were interested later. But now it feels more like a, an it doesn't object. make sense. Yeah, it's it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. It's not as important. It's not important right now. I feel like um, uh, you could, because there's something interesting about this frosty um, uh, kind of like element between you and the landscape. There's something nice about the steering wheel wheel being crystal clear and focused and sharpened, and then the botanical element uh, being behind the glass, not super crisp. So I would explore later if you if you work on it, with, which I think you should. I would kind of like explore doing more of a frosty green on the botanical element, and then you can bring some green rather than black. You can bring some green and then do um, sort of like this, the vent if you wanted to. Definitely, um, I know perfect. You pair the both vents, so it makes sense. So the only thing I would do, um, not entirely get, getting rid of it, but really toning it down so it doesn't become too much of a, uh, of a spotlight on the painting. Okay. But yeah, um, more darks. Real, I done. had real trouble. Um, I haven't done it yet. The steering wheel, how to do that, the, what tones or shades. The steering wheel is a problem. I know. So I would say you got the hood great i think that's really good i love the way you got the hood and then if anything i would just build the the cylindric um shape by uh bringing more dark on the inner part of the steering wheel okay. because it feels lighter on top but i would just build it more yeah i would just bring the darker part of the steering wheel um and then blend in between Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think the steer the steering wheel is important here on this painting, definitely. Okay. So pretend that you don't have the the bar that anchors the steering wheel. Almost paint it as if it were not connected first, as if it, as if it was only a tube, because um, I think that's what's really important. So um, and it's not as defined here. So redefine that tube, that arch. And then you can always bring um, the the bar that connects it um, later. Okay. Mm. What do you think? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, I have a tendency, I, I don't know, in my mind I'm thinking this, maybe I should, uh, it, this really gave me trouble. Oh, yeah, no, 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 it's totally fine, <laughs> but, yeah. But as you notice, I'm, I'm out of the desert there. Oh. I went uh, to, to um, I, it's on the way to Idlewild. I got, <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I, I should have like, I, it wasn't even in my mind, but yeah, this feels like more of a mountainous, uh, you know, landscape. <laughs> so how is the weather there? Is it as hot or is, is it as hot as the desert? Oh, no, it was, it, no, no, because the desert was like 110 yesterday and this was in the 80s. Was, oh, wow. Was, was, wow. Wow. Well, it's a wonderful um, image. And I think, and I, again, I love the vertical aspect. And um, yeah, I would, I would definitely just continue uh, with mostly with the darks. Yeah. Okay. It's going to come. It's going to come because I, I mean, I trust you and your process and I know it's going to develop um, uh, much more. So. Okay. Great. Thank you. I love you so much. <laughs> oh, thanks, Arlene. This is awesome. So we're so appreciative. Uh, and uh, uh, let me just go to Sarah Jennings. This, wow, this is just incredible. Let me kind of like pause it and then see if I can put it side by side with, um, with the rest, uh, with the photograph. Because I think it, it just helps me visualize it. Comparing uh, kills all the joy, as we know, but um, using the image reference um, as, a, as a reference, it could be helpful to um, explore and expand on what we've done. So yeah, thanks for actually, okay, here we go. All right, so I have this, uh, and then I have uh, the image. So I, it's gorgeous, I think it's really, cool and I love the landscape through the windshield it's um, beautiful and textured and complex and painterly um, I think it's really uh, it's really cool let's kind of like go over the structure I love the car I like that you know that there's this like big ass if I can say that screen so it's that's a Tesla right so I think it's really cool that you brought in um, the traditional and the and the and the modern. There's something uh, really interesting. I know that um, the the sun uh, creates a very strange composition on the mirror. So I can see that this is a little bit um, sort of like confusing, but not in, in 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 the sense that it doesn't make sense. So I would consider, for example, there's something really cool about the sun actually getting in the way of the object and bringing some of that light. So uh, if, you, if you want, you could consider um, actually piercing through. So it doesn't feel like it's kind of like separated because it could be interesting to incorporate that. Um, you did it with this beautiful um, fragmentation or whatever the word is of the light inside. Um, so I love that you brought this in. So with the same, uh, on the same page as that, I would consider also creating that effect um, over. Um, so um, another note that I would mention is, I love the, the way you have the landscape. I wouldn't touch anything at all. I think this is really uh, beautiful, but I just feel like uh, the uh, windows of the cars are a tad too dark because it comes forward a lot. So you have this very, um, fluffy and yummy uh, combination of colors that it's so wonderful. But then the graphic uh, um, hardness of the dark, uh, I think it comes forward a lot. So consider um, if you want to soften them a little bit so they become more integrated with the landscape. I wouldn't touch anything about the landscape. I love the way you painted it, but um, I would just give it a, a, a consideration on the black just because um, I feel like it's so um, uh, strong um, and uh, I think that's it because I think it's really cool the way you brought the mirror right here uh, I would possibly if you wanted to I mean darken the the b below the um, whatever that area is called I forgot 
the dashboard, I don't know, uh, the cupboard, whatever. I love that this is so dark because uh, for me, um, there's something about the light coming from the upper left and everything's pale and everything's pastel and you know you bleach the colors uh, beautifully. So it, it shows here the colors are, are bleached um, and pastel-like, but then the light um, kind of like gets completely gone underneath the dashboard. So it's nice to kind of like have that um, rhythm from the sun, which I love that it shows through, and then the bleached landscape, and then fully dark at the bottom. So if anything, this black right here that you have in the cars, I would take it and bring it right below the dashboard. So you increase the luminosity, whatever that called, the luminosity of the, uh, of the landscape and uh, make the light more dramatic. You know, those are great notes because I wanted to try to um, accentuate the difference between the hard edge, mechanical, impersonal interior of the car with the sort of impressionistic view. And um, I was sitting in the car at the end of the day and the light was beautiful. And I also thought about what my husband always says, which is this is a car that almost drives itself which is why I didn't put my reflection in the mirror because it feels like it's a driverless car. It's just a machine that can go on its own. And I love the note about the uh, blacks in the windows of the car. I think that's right. It, it's not really integrated with the rest of the landscape. And I did the interior of the car a lot darker and then I lightened it up because it was, it was so dark. It was almost hard to see the different aspects of light playing on the inside of the car, but I could definitely uh, use a little bit more dark in the interior. It, it was a fun project. I, it was I, challenging, but it was fun. I was going to use that word. This is the funnest painting you've done. <laughs> I love it because it's not taking itself seriously, but at the same time, it is very complex. Um, it's very intentional because this is not just a landscape, it's from inside of the car. Um, I feel it's extremely contemporary and modern. Um, mm -hmm. I love the fact that the, the, the car, uh, it just breaks up um, the painting into different sections. These are gorgeous paintings, gorgeous paintings. I, I, I didn't expect this to turn out to be so interesting uh, visually. So. And I love that you have the screen with a map. That's a, a, a new layer, you know, the digital screen, you know, almost like uh, fighting against the landscape, like analog, digital, you know, it's kind of like interesting and flat. And the car looks very different when it's in park because it indicates where the outside is around the car. If you're too close mm -hmm. to another vehicle or, or uh, the curb, then it would indicate a little red line or a yellow line. I mean, it, literally, it feels like it drives itself. Wow. It's a gorgeous painting. Thank you. Gorgeous painting. Well done, Sarah. Thank you for painting it. And then I'm just going to go, uh, I love this. Uh, Dina, I'm just going to pause uh, the screen and I'm going to, um, hold on one second. I'm, I pause the screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to organize it so I can put it right next to the image. And uh, okay, and then that'll be, yeah. And this will be the last uh, painting. Yeah, wait, we have a charcoal here. Um, and this, oh, that's I think yeah. the charcoal, yeah. From Sarah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so let me just, um, yeah. Gorgeous, awesome. Okay, perfect. So I got it. So Dina, a great image. I love that you um, uh, took a picture of uh, what's your dog's name? I forgot. Katsu. 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 Oh yeah, Katsu. Yes, yes, yes. So um, awesome, uh, really creative combination of uh, the premise plus uh, going beyond uh, the premise. I love that you know, um, there's a landscape and then there's a portrait and uh, there's your uh, beautiful dog. So um, 
I think the composition is amazing. I love the fact that it's cropped. This is, uh, this is what a good composition looks like in the sense of nothing feels um, uh, unintentional. Um, so, and, and I love this of all the paintings, but you know that sometimes, especially when we talked about the potted plant and then how um, it wasn't really uh, off balance enough and there was too much room here or there, but it, none of this happens here because the fact that it's so dramatically cropped makes it so dynamic, so interesting. Uh, I love how it's organized. You have, you're playing with distance, you know, the, the, and, 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 uh, meaning, I, would, I should say this, you're playing with size, um, and that helps you create the illusion of distance. You know, you on the foreground, uh, Katsu on the midground, and then the landscape behind. Um, it's so cool and so interesting. And the fact that, you know, the seat is cropped, um, I know that it's, it's a wash and there's so much more to do, but um, it's just wonderful. I think compositionally, it's the strongest that uh, I've seen from you and uh, really dynamic. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I know it wasn't easy, but yeah. Well, yeah, it was like, um, I thought maybe I'm tackling too much, you know, and you think, well, uh, you're not gonna get better at anything unless you try, right? And with your critique and guidance, uh, gives me the confidence to give it a try. Yeah, you have it. You have it in a very good spot right now. Um, you could you could do many things, and of course, I mean, I would love for everyone to continue working on it and 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 elevate it. And I understand that that's not always the case, the possibility. But um, you could, if you take it just a little bit forward, it doesn't need much more to uh, kind of like make it strong enough to stand on its own. So don't feel like you have to go into detail the same way you did with the portraits. Mm -hmm. This is something that feels very much developed and mm -hmm. uh, it only needs one push. Um, now, you can take it even further if you wanted to develop it the way you do it, like with other paintings. Mm -hmm. But, but it's, that's a personal decision. I would say it's really close to being strong enough to uh, be able to stand on its own. and. Uh, so. One thing I, um, I, the only white, I have two different whites. I have the titanium white, and then I have um, this white, the Liquitex, it's um, transparent mixing white. So mm -hmm. I know, yeah, I know when you were saying it makes, if you, if you mix white and you, you bring it in too soon, it, it makes things chalky. And, and I, I, I don't like that. That's not what I wanted. So I think from now on, if I want to lighten a color, it's better to use the, the transparent mixing. I mean, it, okay. it, is, that, yeah. is that what you recommend? Because uh, the, although the, the titanium white does give excellent coverage, like you right. said, when you want to really highlight something, right. you don't have to worry about doing it too many times. But I know when it's when I'm trying to lighten a color, it just tends to take down the um, the brilliance of the color, and then you end up with a pale, chalky color. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, definitely give it a try. And I think I think I have zinc. I, I bought zinc years ago, and right. I never used it. But I think uh, next time. I'm gonna bring it in because I want to experience the difference between something that doesn't feel as chalky. Because right, and yeah, so definitely, yeah. It's amazing how we're discovering uh, together all these um, complex, uh, you know, things. Because I never thought of it. I thought you know, titanium white, even with my own practice, you know, because you end up being able to use the paint. Um, to your own benefit, meaning, you know, you, you use, there's a learning curve with a, each color. And sometimes some colors take uh, longer to manage and yeah. white and black are those colors. Yeah. But yeah. At, at, at one point you can make uh, titanium white work. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean like it doesn't work. Uh, uh, you, you only need to use less of it or be aware mm -hmm. that it could just overtake. Uh, same thing with, uh, with any black, any paints gray and black. Mm -hmm. But it's important to move beyond that and uh, and uh, basically see what other whites or other paints can can 
do you know and not rely only in one on one yeah yeah and i and i never had Payne's gray until you know uh, you guys were using it i just love it i mean i love the 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 ecru i got the ecru and the Payne's gray and now i incorporate incorporate that with everything and it, it definitely um it's not as strong as using black and white right. so i i really like it and a lot of things even though by color they are black so my interior is black but then you know through the years of time it's faded also right. no. so it's, it's not really truly black right so this paint's gray is great and i'm going to go right. add just a little touch of black to make it a little bit darker but right. it, yeah. it just um I love it. It's so. I'm the next on my list is um, getting the green that Laura was. Oh. Uh, yeah, that the one that you're gonna get too. The new the new the sap green. green. Yeah, yeah um, the sap I green. think uh, Darlene was the one who proposed it. Yeah, Dar Darlene and, and Laura. I'm yeah. gonna get get some of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's on my list. Yeah. Um, I read. I think uh, I forgot who mentioned it, but uh, someone said if you are a teacher and um, you're teaching something and in five years you're still teaching the same um either your field is dead or you are <laughs> so i love that because it's true it, you know there's right. always something coming coming up so it's yeah. good that we are always expanding our toolbox so right yeah. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, learning is lifelong. So. Yeah. 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 No. 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 So. But thank you. Thank you so much for the assignment, and thank you so much for your critique. And, oh, awesome! Thanks, Dina. And, and the company, like everybody. Yes. Everybody yes. We Most really important. Yeah. Seeing this, even though we don't, we see we see each other's videos um, briefly, but we see of, of the names the same, and it's it's a nice little community. I think so. Yeah. We and thank you, Dan, always for. For, for for pulling up all those resources just on a snap, snap of a finger. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thanks, lady. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sure. Awesome. Okay, so I think that's uh, good. So let me just kind of like stop the stop the screen. Yay. So um and thank you. Um basically we're gonna wrap this up. You're welcome to I'm gonna remove the uh, spotlight video in case you want no never mind so that's good yeah um any questions that came up during the session jen in the chat no questions okay uh, ruthie did mention um something interesting that uh pine saw was created in the same way i think that um turpentine oh wow we were talking about um you know that it was came from pine trees um and uh, as she mentioned that's how pine saw was created too, and it's not um, a carcinogenic. So. Oh, I, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, I will definitely uh, try to learn more about it because I think it's really interesting how we went from uh, more natural stuff to more chemical stuff, and then we forgot about the origins of things. So thanks for bringing that up, Ruthie. And so nice also uh, that you uh, joined us today. So uh, that's awesome and uh i think that's good so anyhow um thank you i'm gonna try to work on my painting on uh, next tuesday we're gonna get together and we're gonna talk about um some stuff that we uh, we're gonna expand on first half an hour will be kind of like lecturing or presenting maybe white again or uh maybe other stuff but uh yeah and then uh the second half if you have any um 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 progress that you want to share any more feedbacks or any or any questions but yeah so next tuesday um we can get together again and then uh what else uh, we're trying to put together another show because i feel like now even though um we're not off the hook but i feel like now it seems more sensitive to um uh, share um stuff so I think we're gonna uh, we're gonna create another show and uh, we're gonna do a gallery opening um, soon. So because I think people need to need to get inspired and um, uh, get their moods elevated with our work. And then after that, um, anything anything else, Jen, that I missed? Uh, I think that's it. 
you're good. Yeah. I can't think of anything. Awesome. So we will stop this. We will stop recording, and then we'll uh, Jen will send you a recap with uh, the comments and um, things that we talked about. And then I'm going to send um, uh, the replay link in case you want to, uh, in case you're interested in watching again uh, the webinar. But yeah, sometimes some people do, and um, especially people that have dropped out of the session and then they want to see what's happened after. So thanks again. Have the best weekend. Be safe. Um, yeah, we're doing this uh, next Friday so we can be mentally um, grounded. So we really appreciate you. And um, yeah, I can't wait for Tuesday and then also Friday. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye.